Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com, and today is part two of PCOS. We're going to talk about treatment. In part one, we talked about the symptoms of PCOS being polycystic ovaries, androgen-related effects like hair growth, hirsutism, uh, acne and male pattern baldness, and metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. So in part two, we're going to talk about treating these conditions. So the primary uh, treatment is going to be an anti-androgen birth control pill. And when you take a birth control pill, that inhibits ovulation. So all these little follicles and ovulation cysts are suppressed with birth control pill. You want to pick a birth control pill like Yasmin or Estelle that has more of an anti-androgen or anti-testosterone progesterone in it. The other thing that birth control pills do is they raise a uh, protein called sex hormone binding globulin. And what this sex hormone binding globulin does is it sticks to circulating testosterone. So in your body, you have testosterone. Some of it's stuck to protein or bound. Some of it is free or not attached to protein, and it's the free circulating testosterone that sticks to your receptors and it stimulates androgen side effects. So by raising sex hormone binding globulin levels, more of this sticks to your testosterone, binds it up, and you have a relatively lower free testosterone. So your total testosterone may not go down, but your free testosterone or the active testosterone goes down in less side effects. Now, there's a progesterone that's very anti-androgen called uh, ciproterone acetate, and this is not available in the United States. It's available in the UK and Canada in a birth control pill called uh, Diane and Dianette, and you apparently can get this from Canadian pharmacies, but it's not been approved in the U.S., so for right now, it's not a treatment here for PCOS. Uh, there's a diuretic medication called spironolactone or aldactone. This is a diuretic heart failure, blood pressure lowering medication that works on the kidneys in the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. And renin and angiotensin have to do with fluid retention and elevation of blood pressure. And as the term implies, aldosterone or steroid, it's an anti-aldosterone. So it blocks the receptors and you have less stimulation of your androgen receptors when you take spironolactone. When we use this drug in men, we actually get side effects like gynecomastia or breast swelling because of the anti-estrogen and estrogen raising effects of it. So we take advantage of those effects on this RAAS system as an anti-androgen, very easy, very readily available. Um, it is a blood pressure medicine, so it can lower your blood pressure, it can raise your potassium, so you have to be careful with this and monitor this. Um, lastly, we've got, because of the metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, all the same treatments we would talk about for diabetes, uh, primarily medications, metformin, which decreases the release of glucose from the liver, lowers insulin and lower sugar levels, cheap, generic, will not cause hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, it can be taken by anybody, and is a good, effective treatment for the metabolic syndrome components of PCOS. Um, a drug called Actos, which is a TZD. We used to have a second drug called Avandia. It was taken off the market, unfortunately. Actos is a great drug. It's generic. It lowers insulin resistance. Side effect of Actos is you can have some fluid retention. So if you are already puffy, if you have heart failure, you want to be careful with Actos. But another excellent drug um, for treatment of the metabolic syndrome. If you have cholesterol abnormalities, we talked about that in a cholesterol video, taking fish oil to raise your HDL and lower your triglycerides, all the same dietary considerations, all the same exercise and weight loss considerations as with diabetes for the metabolic syndrome component of PCOS. Uh, lastly, fertility issues because you don't have that successful ovulation, you don't have release of the follicle and the egg floating off into your uh, fallopian tube, you don't have the corpus luteum production and progesterone which makes the lining of the uterus proliferate and have a nice place for the egg to implant, we have significant fertility issues with PCOS. A little bit beyond the level of my understanding or for this video, but drugs like Clomid, which stimulates the brain to make FSH and LH uh, timed to trigger ovulation, other uh, medications, but I'm going to let you talk to the fertility specialist in specific if you have fertility issues with PCOS. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.